Okay, back on to the FXR here. So, got this all rebuilt in the last video. So now I'm going to figure out how to put all this stuff back together. So in these FXRTs and police bikes, you have all this monkey motion crap over here. This weird looking brake pedal that goes to basically a floater lever here. It goes back to the actual brake cylinder, which is laying way back here. So you get all kinds of moving parts. And you got multiple pins in here, and these pins are held in with a seriation where you beat them in, so it's hard to get them in and out. And there's really no room to do any of this stuff, so I'm sure there's a way to do it, but I don't know how it is. So we're just gonna make it work the way we can. So it might get a little interesting here. First thing I do is clean some of the muck off of this thing. So pull out one of our cleaner rags here. Wipe this thing down. This will be the first and last time you get to this part for a while. This is buried underneath the exhaust pipe. And under all these oil lines over here we can't get to it. So, not sure how we're going to do this. I don't like being on that side of me when I'm filming. You get a better view from this side. Alright. Should wipe off some of the excess crap. Should be good to go. Let's figure out how it all goes together now. Let's see here. A few tools over here. This is the important one. So I got a couple of drift punches here to beat the pin in with. Depending on which one I need, I don't know. So I got a few parts laying here. Okay, so first thing I do is figure out how this goes together. I'm not going to go watch another video again, so... Looks like you're supposed to get a Zerk fitting in here and lubricate it. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of access for that. Goes under pretty tight. It's not exactly free moving. Looks like that goes in there. So good, we can just beat the pin with a hammer and shh, beat it in there. It's a lot easier than how it came apart. And of course, after you beat it in, there's a there's a cotter key and a washer on this outside where the pin goes through it, which you have no access to once you put it on. So nice. Okay, now this one here, I'm not sure where it goes. If I had to guess, I'd say it goes on the outside, not the inner side. This here probably goes on the inside. Right, so once you put the pin in, you can't adjust your free play anymore. Unless you turn the whole cylinder, which you can't do because the bracket won't let you do that. So that's a good design. Good for what? We're not sure, but it's good for something. I can't remember how far I unscrewed that, but we should be close to that number there. I don't know. That's going to be interesting to do. Okay, this one here is adjustable also way up in the front. Not really. There's no lock nut up there. No, that's fixed. No, that's wonderful. So the one that's on the outside where you can get to it is a fixed rod. There's no adjustment there and there's no adjustment there. So the only adjustment you got is this inner one, which is the one that's on the inside, which you can't get to. That is a brilliant design. Harley engineers at best. So you can't adjust your free play unless you 
spin this around all the way around, but you can't do that, I don't think, because there's probably no room. I'd be shocked if you could spin that thing. Either way, once you put the pin in here, you couldn't do it. So let's see what we got here. This goes in there like that. Yeah, there's no way of spinning that thing. You get to, it hits everything. So somehow you have to pre-guess what all this stuff is. It said brilliant engineering. Okay, we're using our fancy tribodyne grease, big buck crap. If you know what big buck crap is, this is either a two hundred dollar a can or a three hundred dollar tube, three sixty. So it's a very high graphite grease with other fancy things in there. This is basically lifetime lubricated right here. Because probably nobody's going to be going back in here again. And I'm pretty sure you have no access to that zerk fitting behind all this crap in here. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Especially when there was absolutely no grease in there anyway. It's never been lubed. I didn't clean that. There's no grease in there. That thing's never been lubricated in its life. All right. Lifetime lubricated. So, now, how are we going to do this? Basically, we're going to put this into here. And hopefully... You can assemble this like this somehow. And I'm pretty sure that doesn't work either. Like this is a really stupid design. Really stupid. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push this in to where you engage the rod, but we do not engage the beat in part. So we can still work on it. We can take it back out and adjust it. There's a big nut someplace. There's a big nut right over here that you tighten down to hold this all together. Oh, that fits really, really nice. Yeah. So it's a nice chrome plated nut. Which means it doesn't work very well. Goes on about that far and stops. You're supposed to have a nice way of holding this. Let's see if the bracket is square, so that's supposed to keep it from rotating when you tighten this down, which I'm sure happens in the engineer's mind, but not in anybody else's. There we go, right there. Okay, get the threads all, get them so they work. Turn it over and make sure it works both ways. Of course it doesn't work both ways, why would it do that? Way to have it on last. I don't know. Blow the crap off the threads. Okay, we gotta go on pretty good that way. Flip it over. Yeah, we gotta go in both directions. Good. Otherwise, you gotta mark it, see which way it goes. Okay, so. 
over here. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put the master cylinder in first. Get the square to line up in there, whichever direction that is. Right there. Kind of, not really. So there's a square right in there, you can't really see it. See it on this side. So, we have this lock tab in here, which is a four speed clutch tab. Doesn't really do much. That it's already bent over. So where's that supposed to go? I'm assuming it's supposed to be a tang waiting to be engaged in something. Ah, on the bottom down there. See a nice deep cutaway on the bottom. Okay. That means this is supposed to go in like this, straight down, and you can fold your ears down up on the top. This one appears to be uh, used. Used and abused, as we call that. So I'll have to put a new one on there when we get ready for that. So now we're going to go ahead and just tighten this up. I think I'm going to need two hands for this project. This is an inch and an eighth wrench. Okay. Slight torque, not too much. So that's engaged all the way. So now we're going to go ahead and try to put this lever in here. Push it all the way in. Bring it down. Try to engage the pin. There we got the pin engaged. Okay, and we got this much free plant. That's our free plant. You can barely feel it hitting the other spring, but it's, it's in there. Okay, so now this has to go in here with another pin. Be that one, I'm assuming. It's another one of those beat-in pins. I'm not sure which way it's supposed to beat in. Probably that way. Okay, this just bends down. Pedal goes up. Takes an Allen bolt over here, it looks like. Probably this one right here. Right there. Looks a little short though. Taking that big washer out so I can see it better. That bolt's way too short. I probably made a comment about that before. So without the big thick washer in there, that's just pushed until it hit the frame. You can see how thick the what you have to work with. And you put that washer in there, 
you only got about one and a half threads holding this foot peg arrangement on here, this foot board. And I do not see any other Allen bolts here, so that's the one they were using. Now there's probably a limited depth you can go because see, it goes into a frame boss. So we're going to have to determine how much more length we can put on that before we run out. Um, this big thick washer, I'm guessing, is probably not supposed to be in there because that one doesn't have it. They probably put this in there because the bolt bottomed out, would be my guess. So we're going to find out if that bolt bottoms out. <clears throat> so we're going to find our Allen wrenches. Screwdrivers out of the way, the first thing you do. It's easy to want to use for 5 16 but I think that is a 3 8 bolt. Should be the next size up. Should be this one. There we go. Should be the right stuff, I think. Hey, look at that. It's the right one. Okay, so we want to see if this bolt will bottom out. So what you always do is put the bolt in without any washes under it. Find out if it'll tighten up all the way. Those threads feel like crap. There it goes. Okay, that bolt is now tight. See the peg is loose. So see that's loose. Now you see the gap right in here. Looks like it's a real thick finger. So my guess is probably the thickness of a lock washer, but not the thickness of that. That's huge. So we need to put a lock washer in there and then see if this will get tight. So we'll go over to our lock washer department. Find ourselves a nice heavy duty 3 8 lock washer. Relatively shiny. And we'll try this one. We'll see if this does what we want to do. It's all trial and error. That holds it up so it doesn't move. Okay, where'd my lock washer run off to? Lock washer. Undo that one. Oh, that thing's stripped. Oh, that's wonderful. That's stripped. Great. It's not these threads. And what that means, it's those threads. More hidden surprises. Oh yeah. So there's no appears to be no threads in there, at least one or two only. So great. And cheap ass Harley, they only use a real thin thread in there. Alright, so that needs to be heat coiled. Not sure how good that one up there is either. Those appear to be good threads. 
those look good. Those look like crap. So these don't work. Now you could go to a 716 bolt on that, but I don't know if that would clear up inside there. It was pretty tight with uh, this head down there on there. So it probably wouldn't work anyway. So we're going to heat coil that. <coughs> so it's 3 8 coarse thread. Let's get a heat coil. We got one more thing that we can't do yet. What a fun project. Alright, we'll be back. <laughs> 